hi guys welcome back to my channel this is crafted akumbis and i'll be showing you how to sew a gathered maxi gown with lace yoke these are the fabrics we'll be working with we have three yards of net lace and three and a half yards of duchess it's going to be a simple tutorial so just stay tuned and let's get started i have made an illustration to help us understand better i'll be using the widest part of my circumference measurement which is my hip for the width of my gown for the yoke, I'll be using the lace fabric. Here, I'll be using the plain fabric. Then for the gathers, I'll use the plain fabric, but I'll be layering it with the lace to add more beauty to the gown. The sleeve is lace and the tie rope is plain fabric. Take your total length measurement. In this case, mine is 58 inches. Next, measure from the shoulder to where you want your yoke to stay. I'll use 16 inches here. With your tape still on the shoulder, measure to the length you want the plain fabric to stop. Whatever you have, subtract by the yoke measurement to get the new measurement. So, mine is 34 inches minus 6 will give me 28 inches. For the gathers, subtract the total gown length measurement from 34 inches to give 24 inches. When you total everything up, you'll have the full length measurement. Add one inch for shoulder and joining allowance. One inch also for joining to the yoke and the lower part. Then for the gathers, half inch for joining the upper part and one inch for hemming. I'll just round it up to 26 inches. The next thing to consider is the width of the fabric. So take your widest circumference measurement. Mine is my hip and I have 40 inches. Now the whole circumference is also 36 inches. And these are the important measurements you'll be needing. Divide the hip circumference measurement by four, then add about five inches so as to enable us um, have a little gathers at the top. But you are free to add more if you want more gathers then add one inch side seam allowance which will give us a total of 16 inches now for the last step i'll multiply this 15 inches by two which will give me 30 inches plus one inch side seam allowance which will give a total of 31 inches so when you are folding your fabric you place on fold using these measurements okay the upper one will be 16 inches the lower one will be 31 inches the next thing is to draft out your pattern draw the satin line at the top of your pattern paper place your neck width measurement of 3 inches but i'll use 2.5 inches because i want it closer to my neck i'll use 2.5 inches also for the depth connect to form the front neckline Place half of your shoulder measurement on the satin line, go down by an inch, connect the points to the neckline to form the shoulder slope. Place your armhole length, which is bust circumference divided by 6 plus 1.5 inches. Mark whatever you have and connect. Then draw your perpendicular line across. On the line, place a quarter of the bust circumference measurement. I have 9 inches plus half an inch or one inch for ease i'm using half an inch plus one inch side seam allowance giving me a total of 10.5 inches mark whatever you have on the line go down and place the same measurement mark it and connect the points with a straight line to make the front armhole mark half of the armhole length go in by three quarters of an inch and mark it Take your straight ruler, connect from the shoulder to the points that you just made. Then use your curve ruler to make the curve to touch the chest line. Also make the back armhole starting from the midpoint of the line and make your back armhole curve. Next, we will create the yoke. To make the yoke, measure 6 inches from the shoulder down and mark. Don't add the allowance yet. While transferring to fabric, we would include it. Mark at the other side 
and connect the two points together using a straight line. To make the back neckline, just go down by one inch, then use your curved ruler to make your curve. Next, you add half an inch for your shoulder allowance. After you are done with all this, then you cut out using the back armhole and the back neckline. Transfer the pattern onto another pattern paper and cut it out. The first pattern is for the front bodies while the other is for the back bodies. For the back yoke, mark out whatever length you want and draw your line. Place both pattern over the other and cut out any excess just to balance it. To finish the front pattern, cut off the back armhole and back neckline. Then label your pattern so that you don't get it mixed up. I'm cutting out the back yoke, then I will cut out the front yoke too. To transfer the yoke patterns on the lace fabric, place your lace fabric on fold, then place the back yoke on it. Move away from the center fold by about half an inch because it will be cut into two and we are going to fold the edges in. Pin it down so that it doesn't move while cutting. Then add half an inch joining allowance at the bottom. Now you can cut out. Again, fold the lace fabric, place your front pattern over it, pin it, add the half inch allowance at the bottom and cut it out. Placing the fabric on fold, I have gone ahead to cut out the mid part of our gown. The length is 16 inches and the height is 29 inches. I have cut both the back and front piece. We will now proceed to cut out the gathered part of the gown. Remember the total height is 26 inches and the length is 31 inches. So I have gone ahead to cut out 31 inches length and 26 inches for the height. Our fabric is on fold and I have two pieces total, one for the front and one for the back. Using the same measurements, I have cut out the lace fabric as well because we'll be using both of them together. We'll be using our pattern to cut out the armhole in the part of our gown. So place the fabric on fold. Remember the fabric that we cut 16 by 29 and put the pattern over the fabric but go down by half an inch because we didn't add it to the pattern when we were cutting it out but we added it to the total height of the fabric so place it on the edge of the seam allowance not the center fold then you cut it this is the front bodies do the same thing for the back bodies okay place your pattern paper leave half an inch at the edge then you cut it out. Moving to the sleeves, I doubled my lace fabric because I'll be cutting both sleeves together. I have my sleeve pattern here that I'll use for this tutorial, but I'll leave a link in the description box for those that don't know how to draft a basic sleeve pattern so that you can watch my video and understand better. Fold the lace and place the pattern over it. Next, pin in place. Add 1 inch seam allowance at the side. Then half inch for joining allowance at the top of the sleeve. Then cut it out. This is the front yoke and front bodies. So take the bodies to the machine and fold in the top edge by half an inch. Then stitch. Also run your gathered stitch on it to form your gathers. This is what it looks like after you have folded it in and gathered it. The next thing you are going to do is to paint the lace fabric onto it. With the right side of the lace laying upon the wrong side of the fabric. 
so here I'm just checking to see if everything is laying nicely. I am done attaching both of them together and it looks good already. Go ahead and fold in the edge of the back bodies. Then you run your gutter stitch and pull it to form the gutters. Take each piece of the back yoke and fold in the split by half an inch. Find the center of the back bodies and place your yoke on each side of the center and stitch it down. We now proceed to the bottom part of the gown. Remember I said we will be layering the lace over the plain fabric. So separate the fabric and lace take a piece of each and place the lace over the fabric make sure the right side of the lace is facing the wrong side of the fabric then take it to the machine and stitch together by half an inch at the top after that flip it over and iron it then run a gadget stitch of half an inch or an inch mark the center of the fabric and pull the thread to gather it evenly We are about to attach the bodies to the gathered fabric. So fold it into two, notch it to find the center, then place both front and back piece together. Because we want to um, trim off the corner with a slight curve. So you go up by about an inch and um, use your chalk to make a slight curve, then trim out the excess. This will give our gown a better shape. Separate and open it flat. Place the gathers upon it and pin it down. Do the same for the back. Then take it to the machine and stitch it down. Now that we are done attaching the gathers to both the front and the back bodies, the next thing we are going to do is to join both the front bodies and back bodies together. Okay, so this is the back body. I'll be placing the um, front bodies over it and be stitching it at the side seams.
After placing the top bodies on the bottom bodies, the next thing to do is to join the lace together at each side. Okay, so we are only going to join the lace from the um, bottom. We'll take it up to the gathered stitch, or you can start from the gathered stitch all the way to the bottom. Anyhow, you want to start stitching. Okay, but I'll prefer to start from the bottom. Okay, so when you are done with that, you do the other side as well. Make sure you align both the gathers at, on the front bodies and at the back together. Then keep stitching and stop just where the lace terminates there. Okay? So you do the same thing at the other side. This is what it looks like after we stitch the lace together. Okay, so we have stitched the lace at the side seam. So the next thing we're going to do is to um, stitch the plain fabric together. So the first thing you'll do is to get the lace out of the way. You push it in very well so that when you're stitching, it doesn't come in the way. Okay, so you stitch it all the way from the hem up to the armhole all right so make sure everything aligns place them together properly like this then you run your stitch okay remember we left one inch seam allowance so we're going to run one inch all the way to the hem all right and we'll do the same thing on the other side when we are done with running the stitches at the side seams we're going to join it at the shoulder This is what it looks like so far and it's coming out really lovely so um you can see the top you can see the gathers and at the top and also the lace over the um princess fabric so everything is is looking nice the next thing we're going to do is to um create the rope that we're going to attach to the neck okay that we're going to tie at the neck so uh, I'm going to use a one and a half inches width for the rope. 
so I'll grab my fabric right here I'll fold it into two I'm going to be using the entire width of the fabric because it's 60 inches so I'll use the whole 60 inches but I discovered that I needed more than 60 inches so you can make yours any length you want okay so I use um, 60 inches for this and I'm pinning it so that um, it will not slip because it's, the fabric is very slippery the width of the rope I'll be using is um, 1.5 inches one and a half inches okay and since the uh, fabric I'm going to use I'm going to fold it into two like this okay so that will be 1.5 plus 1.5 will give us three inches plus um, half inch on each side also that will be a total of four inches altogether okay so I'll measure four inches and mark it then I'll cut it out when you're done cutting remove your pins open it up fold it over into two then you iron it then also iron in half inch on both sides It's time to attach the rope to the neckline. So first thing is to close up both ends of the rope. So fold each end of the rope into two, right sides facing each other and stitch by half an inch. Then locate the center of the rope and align it with the center of the front neckline. Then we pin it down. But your rope must be right side facing the wrong side of your neckline, okay? So the right side of the um, rope touching the wrong side of the front neckline. Then you pin it all the way around to the back slit, okay? When you are done pinning, you take it to your machine and go and sew it in by half an inch, okay? So when you finish sewing it by half an inch, flip it over and use the front to cover it just like I'm showing you so you flip it over on top of it to cover all the uh, seams okay so you see what I'm doing you see how neat is already looking so that's what you're going to do you flip it over then run your stitch from the beginning of the slit at the back all the way to one end of the rope then you take it again and close up the other end so that's what you're going to do everything is looking good so far you can see what it looks like okay I discovered that um, I would have preferred the rope to be a bit longer so you can increase your own length if you wish so the next thing I'm going to do is to attach the sleeve. So I'll just remove the uh, pattern. Then I'll take each piece. I'll close it up at the side seam. Then I'll also hem it at the um, wrist opening. Then after I do that, I'll attach the sleeve to the gown. When I'm done attaching the sleeve, the next thing to do is to finish up the hem of the lace the fabric we are done with our maxi gown and it came out really really beautiful it came out really really nice you can see it everything is laying nice and flat all the um, stitches are clean all right everything is looking nice so if you enjoyed this tutorial please give me a thumbs up share with your family and friends um, leave your comments in the comment section and don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for watching. I really appreciate you guys. Bye